Hey everybody, Dylan Loomis here. Welcome to today's episode of Tesla News. Elon has said their casting press for the Model Y is one of the biggest in the world and a recent piece from Automotive Engineering proves this to be true. The Model Y's Gigapress casting machine could very well become the defining factor to help Tesla achieve a production rate of 1 million vehicles per year. The machine is supplied by the IDRA Group and so far Tesla is the company's first customer for the OL6100CS, a giant casting machine that underwent some customization specific for Tesla. The machine itself is 64 feet long and 17 feet tall and weighs 410 tons. According to the report, the Gigapress is intended to be installed in several locations including Fremont and Giga Shanghai. This press eliminates all the labor to assemble pieces and subcomponents. Tesla has estimated that the use of a single piece casting design will deliver a 30% reduction in the size of the Model Y's body shop. Tesla could then roll out these same improvements to other vehicles in Tesla's lineup. This strategy is costly up front in terms of initial outlay, but will pay dividends in the long run to increase production efficiencies. This is yet another example of Tesla's obsession with innovation and constantly striving to think differently and make incremental improvements that competitors wouldn't even consider. Cars.com has an annual American-made index which they describe as an independent annual list that ranks the new vehicles that contribute the most to the US economy based on criteria ranging from US factory jobs and manufacturing plants to part sourcing. Tesla was not included last year, but this year they have three models in the top 10. It's interesting to note that the Model S ranks ahead of the Model 3 as the battery cells are made in Nevada while the Model S batteries are imported. Also of note was the report said only 18% of Americans knew that Teslas were made in California. It also noted how Americans are now twice as likely to recognize Tesla as a California-made vehicle compared to last year. It was 10% in 2019 versus 18% this year. As the Tesla community, we need to take this and do what we can to ensure that friends, family, and coworkers know how American Tesla really is. Of course, price is still the main limiting factor, but perception is important as well. Elon sent an email to employees yesterday that was obtained by Electric in which he yet again encouraged staff to go all out through the end of the month, noting the importance of this matter. This is certainly not the first time he has attempted to motivate employees for the end of quarter push, and this quarter was certainly a challenging one with Fremont being closed for over a month this quarter. There are still talks of Tesla turning profitability in Q2, but only time will tell. The Tesla plant in Austin, Texas continues to move closer to becoming a reality. A board of local officials in Texas began discussions today to hear public comments on Tesla's proposed manufacturing plant in suburban Austin. The land is part of the Del Val Independent School District. Tesla is looking for the school board to forgive up to $68 million on its property tax bill over 10 years. The 4 to 5 million square foot plant would employ roughly 5,000 workers and would become Tesla's fourth for vehicle assembly joining Fremont, Giga Nevada, and Giga Shanghai. Tesla is expected to spend around $1 billion on the facility. If the school board approves the agreement and Tesla moves forward with the factory on the site, construction could start in the third quarter of this year. SpaceX already has a rocket development facility and hangar in McGregor, Texas. Elon's tweets about relocating the HQ to Texas or Nevada may be carrying a bit more weight than just a threat. Due to the COVID lockdowns, California's state budget has been hammered and now sits at a $54 billion deficit, 46% higher than it was at the peak of the Great Recession. This has led California lawmakers to consider a series of heavy tax increases to close the deficit. In addition, Voters will consider two ballot initiatives in November to hike property taxes on commercial properties, which could increase taxes by 20% for Tesla. The United Auto Workers Union is also pressuring Travis County to make any tax abatements given to Tesla in Texas contingent on an agreement by Tesla to unionize its workforce. 
Tesla has been locked in a legal battle with the UAW over the union's attempt to organize the plant in Fremont. It's still too murky at this point to jump to any conclusions, but at this point it does feel like all options are on the table, at least to some degree. Wedbush Securities analyst Dan Ives released a note to clients saying their firm puts reservation numbers for the Cybertruck at over 650000 While this would be exciting if it were true, there are far more important things to work out for Tesla than generating a high number of $100 pre-orders. With the Cybertruck set to enter production in an entirely new plant and with an entirely new exoskeleton, the main challenge will be implementing the machine that builds the machine to fulfill the demand. Take into consideration the additional battery requirements that this vehicle will need to hit the promised performance metrics, and it becomes clear that Tesla's challenge will not be generating demand or creating interest in the Cybertruck. Of course, more pre-orders is a good thing, but it's already looking like they will have a multi-year backlog to ramp production before they can even begin to satisfy a portion of the reported demand they have now. System Plus Consulting just released an under the hood series taking a look at the sensors, cameras, and radar that are being used in the 2020 version of the Tesla Model 3 with hardware version 3. Rather than covering it briefly, I'm going to save it for a deeper dive video for tomorrow's episode. I'm excited to get technical in that one as we'll be able to understand hardware costs that Tesla is working with in 2020 and we'll find out how their systems have changed over the years. Be sure to tune in tomorrow for that, but this will wrap it up for today's episode. Please like this video if you learned something new and I'll see you guys tomorrow.